What's up guys? So today we're gonna to talk about kind of how to maintain muscle mass if you're going into a diet phase and just kind of like the importance of maintaining that muscle mass for years, you know, to come later on in life. It's really important that we maintain as much muscle as possible as we age, right? As we're like building new muscle, obviously. But um, yeah, so when you are going into a calorie deficit, if you wanna lose fat, you need to go into a calorie deficit, obviously. And so that means you're giving your body less calories than it needs. So when that happens, obviously you will lose weight. Um, and you can't really pick and choose where that weight comes from. So uh, some of it can be muscle, some of it can be fat. Unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of water things happening, whatever. But um, the point is that we wanna maintain as much of that muscle mass that you already have while you're in a calorie deficit. Now being in a calorie deficit isn't ideal for building new muscle. Um, if you are brand new to strength training, then yes, you can build new muscle um, while you're in a calorie deficit or if you're really, you know, you play, pay super close attention to your macros and you are like an intermediate trainee, you probably can put on a teeny tiny tiny bit of muscle while in a calorie deficit, but ultimately the goal in a calorie deficit is just to maintain your muscle. That is your number one goal. If you build muscle in a calorie deficit, amazing, but you just don't wanna lose any or you wanna lose as little as possible, right? Okay, so how we do this is by getting that protein in <laughs> and obviously strength training when you're in a calorie deficit. So don't just do cardio or don't just be in a calorie deficit and you know just reduce your calories but that's it you're not like walking or you're not you're only doing cardio or you're not exercising at all you're just in a calorie deficit um or restricting calories way too severely you know um you need to play with those numbers so anywhere between like 10 percent is a very low reduction obviously to like 20 25 percent would be like pushing it it's kind of aggressive um but that should be really like the good amount of range of calories that you are um, subtracting from your maintenance calories okay um, and that'll get you in a good range so that way you're still eating enough to fuel all your muscles and all that jazz but you're not completely depleting your body where it's starving okay um, and those are just really good ways to prevent for losing muscle and then another thing is making sure you're prioritizing your protein especially in a calorie deficit you're already depleted of calories you need to make sure that you are prioritizing that protein. So whenever you're in a calorie deficit, I suggest getting closer to that like one gram per pound of like, I don't know, ideal body weight, I guess. Um, if you're overweight, you don't wanna use your body weight when you're calculating this. So like you can use goal body weight or ideal body weight, whatever, um, to calculate your protein. And I would shoot closer to that one gram when you are in a calorie deficit. When you're not in a calorie deficit, we know there's a range. So it's 0 0.7 to 1.2, right? Um, and I mean, it could still be a range, but I, if I was in a calorie deficit to maintain as much muscle as possible, you are going to get that from eating as much protein as possible. So one gram, shooting it up to the one gram is a good idea when you're in a calorie deficit. Um, and then also obviously doing weight bearing exercises. So you need to be strength training when you're in a calorie deficit. You can't just be depleting your body of calories and doing no exercise or just doing cardio. Um, you need to be weight bearing. Weight bearing exercises are what stresses and maintains, builds that muscle, okay? So those are the types of exercises that you need. Resistance training, get some dumbbells, get some kettlebells, get some something, you know? Body weight, if you, you know, you, push-ups, whatever, but it needs to be weight-bearing. Anything weight-bearing against your muscle, that's gonna count, okay? So those are the top two things that I would focus on if I was in a calorie deficit and you're trying to lose fat, but you need to try to maintain that muscle mass. And I'm gonna explain in a minute why it's important to maintain that muscle mass, but just remember, those are the two things that you need to do. Prioritize protein closer to the one gram per pound of goal body weight, whatever you wanna use. Um, and weight bearing exercises at least two times a week is absolutely necessary to maintain whatever muscle you already have while in a calorie deficit so that way you can lose fat. Um, so then basically kind of explain why this is important and what happens if you don't do it. So um, if you don't care about why it's important or what happens after you don't do it, then just take the first half of the video, take those two things, remember to implement them in your calorie deficit and have a good day. So the second half is really gonna be, yes. So what happens, right? So let's say you are in a calorie deficit, you don't prioritize your protein, um, you're just restricting your calories and you're not really doing anything, you're staying sedentary. What's gonna happen is your body is going to lose muscle mass. Muscle mass is 
easier to lose. <laughs> your body likes to rely on it. Your body will break it down for what your body needs. You know, like if your body needs things, it's going to break down that muscle mass first. Um, so, you know, yes, you will lose scale weight. So the scale will, if you're in a calorie deficit, you're sedentary. Yes, you're going to lose weight. The scale will go down, but the weight that you lose will more than likely be muscle mass. So then what happens is like, let's put this in a scenario. You go to calorie deficit for six weeks, you lose 10 pounds on the scale. And, but then you actually find out that you, and you lost nine pounds of muscle and one pound of fat, or even in cases I've seen it where people have lost like 12 pounds of muscle and put on two pounds of fat. You know what I mean? Which is wild, but yeah, I've seen that happen too. So, and obviously we take these scans with a grain of salt. They're not 100% accurate. We already know that. Um, we need to make sure that there are things in place that can make it so it's as accurate as it can be. So like doing it at the same time that you did your last scan, making sure, you know, you on an empty stomach, blah, blah, blah. Same situation. Try to make it so there are the least amount of variables. But the point is, is that you will lose muscle mass. And so that way, at the end of all of this, you actually end up with a greater body fat percentage, if that makes sense. So you weigh 150 pounds to start. Um, you, you get to 140 or whatever. So 150 pounds to start, you're at 35% body fat. You get to 140 pounds, but then you lost the nine pounds of muscle and the one pound of fat. So you actually end up 140 pounds, 38% body fat. Right? Does that make sense? Because you lost the muscle and your fat stayed the same, pretty much. So that way, that means you ended up with a greater body fat percentage in relation to your muscle mass. Okay? I hope I'm explaining that correctly. Um, or not correctly, but I hope I'm explaining that in a way that you're understanding it. But, um, yeah, so that's what ends up happening. And that is, like, worst case scenario. So you just made, you just put yourself at greater risk for, you know, long-term health issues but you lost 10 pounds. So to you, you're like, but I lost 10 pounds. I should be healthier now. The thing is skeletal muscle mass is so important to our, just everything in life, getting older, um, being capable, being less fragile. You don't want to get older and just like your bones and your mouth, you're so brittle that if you fall, that's it game over. Or if you can't get an illness, game over because your body's not strong enough to fight these things off or to fight back or to you know recover so that's why it's just so important that you don't spend all this time yo-yo dieting because if you spend like 10 15 years yo-yo dieting right so you lose 10 pounds so that means you lost 10 pounds of muscle you know if you weren't doing it with weight bearing and it prioritizing the protein all that stuff you lost 10 pounds of muscle so then a year goes by you put that 10 pounds back on you're like you know what i want to lose the 10 pounds again so you lose the 10 pounds you end up you're worse off than when you started because you lost the 10 pounds, but now you're at a greater body fat percentage. So the next time you start your new diet, you're starting off worse than you were the first time. So then you end up losing more muscle mass that round, but you lost 10 pounds on the scale. So then a year goes by, like, you know what I mean? You do this over and over and over again. And after 10, 15 years, you're actually worse off than what you started because all that time you lost so much muscle mass and not very much fat. So it's just very important that you prioritize protein and you prioritize weight bearing exercises and you know uh, maybe we need to think of it as more of like I need to, instead of thinking of it as I need to lose fat maybe think of it as I need to build muscle change your mindset around it and that could probably help you know thinking about things that you can add to your life and add to your diet are much easier for us to grasp than when we're thinking about things that we have to remove you know what I mean? Like I have to remove my Friday nights with my girlfriends. I have to remove, I don't know, my drive through runs from lunch. I have to remove, like, yes, you need to tailor all those things, get all of that under control. But if you think about what you can add to it, I'm going to start adding more lean protein into my diet. I'm going to start adding weight bearing exercises two times a week. These things, like think about what you can add to your diet as opposed to taking it away and try to shift your mindset into I'm here to build muscle. And a lot of times, if you're prioritizing your protein and you're prioritizing strength training, the fat loss will happen. It's inevitable. The more protein that you consume, the less likely it is for you to be overweight. It just is what it is because protein promotes satiety, which means you stay fuller longer. Um, protein has it helps build and maintain muscle, obviously, which helps you have a greater metabolism. Protein helps you have more energy, helps you have more, like all of these things, the positive things that protein lets you, 
allows you to have, not to mention the thermic effect of food that just basically means you burn more calories when you eat protein. So let's say you had 400 um, calories of protein um, and 400 calories of carbs. In order to digest that, your body needs to use some of that. So really you're having like, I don't know, 350, I'm just guessing numbers here, you guys, but 350 calories over here when you're really in your habit, you're still having the, you know, 390 calories over here because it still requires energy to burn carbs, but it, it requires much more energy to burn protein. So all around, you know, clean sources of protein are your best bet and just start trying to implement those into your diet. And it's really easy just to start, try to start with like a big breakfast. I don't care what that is. You know, if you want to supplement a protein shake for it, if you want to eat real food, it really doesn't, whatever works for you and your lifestyle and your schedule, but prioritizing um, a big protein based meal in the morning is going to help you throughout the day so much more than just like having like one egg and a piece of toast or something, you know? Um, so I hope that was helpful. I'm not trying to ramble. I want to make sure that I covered everything I wrote in my notes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So remember, in order to maintain muscle mass while you are dieting, you need to prioritize your protein intake. I would lean close to one gram per pound of ideal body weight. And you need to be doing strength bearing exercises, resistance bearing exercises at least two times a week. And then in order to kind of maintain your muscle mass as we age, like when you're at maintenance, no longer in a calorie deficit, then it's important for you just to maintain that muscle mass by having your 0.7 to 1.2 grams of protein, keeping that going and continuing your weight bearing exercises, obviously. Um, you know, other things are important too, cardio steps, all that stuff, but this, I just wanted to particularly focus this video on maintaining your muscle mass and the importance of it and how you can do that. So that's it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll see you later. Bye.